Hey everyone, so today we will be looking at the Lego Harry Potter set 75967 Forbidden Forest Umbridge's Encounter. This is the first time since 2007 that Lego has released a Order of the Phoenix themed set. The set retails for 50 Australian dollars, 30 American dollars and 25 Great British pounds. For that price you get 253 pieces and 5 minifigures and 1 big fig. Now in Australia and across Europe this set was supposed to release on June 1st, however there seems to be quite quite a lot of issues with the distribution of this product. In Australia, it is reported that most of the retail stores will not be getting this until July 1st. On legoshop.com on launch date, the set did not go up for release. I called up my local Lego store and put as many of the remaining Harry Potter sets they had aside, which included the Forbidden Forest. When I went to the store to pick it up, there was the most amount of these sets left, which honestly quite surprised me as I thought more people would be after it due to the centaur minifigures. Especially in Australia as well, I thought this set would attract a lot more buyers due to Umbridge, as we did not get the Bricktober set that Umbridge featured in two years ago. Speaking of Umbridge, let's take a closer look at the minifigures. First up is the man of the hour, Harry Potter. And in this set, he is wearing a gray jumper with a red top on underneath. His face is the same as it was in the Goblet of Fire sets last year. And he's got the new shorter black hair piece. On the back, he has a hood printing and Harry does have an alternate face. This version of Harry is the exact same version as the one featured in the 2020 Burrow. Next up is Hermione Granger, also featuring the same hair and headpiece that was featured in last year's Hagrid's Hut set. She comes with a new printed jumper torso and plain black legs, also featuring her classic wand. Hermione does have back printing continuing her jumper pattern and has an angry alternate face. Hermione is also exclusive to this set. Next up, we have Dolores Jane Umbridge, who is exclusive to this set with a new exclusive face and body print as well. In fact, the only thing that is repeated from her Bricktober minifigure is her hairpiece. She has dual molded legs and feet printing and comes with the same color wand as Harry, which stems off the same wand stem. She also has some back printing with some subtle pink spots, which don't quite pick up on camera. She also has an alternate screaming face, which is very accurate for when the centaurs carry her off into the forest. If you look up closely, you can see she has a cat brooch and a bow on her torso. You can also see the subtle pink polka dots on the front and back of the figure. Here are the two umbrages in comparison. I personally prefer the brick toba one. I think that outfit was shown a lot more and is more featured when you think of umbrage. However, I am glad that we do have a second iteration that is very different from the first, especially since I did pay a small for to get my hands on that Bricktober pack in Australia. If you look closer, you can see some subtle differences between the two faces of the character. The most noticeable difference is that the old Umbridge has some more prominent lines on her forehead and underneath her eyes. The other difference is that the Bricktober Umbridge has a more stern, cruel looking expression, whereas the one in the Forbidden Forest has that shocked expression. Here's also a quick comparison with our new Umbridge with the original 2007 Dolores Umbridge. These days, the original figure can go for up to $100 on on her own on Bricklink or eBay. Here's a quick look at all three versions of the Dolores Umbridge figure. Last but not least are the two centaurs. They both have the same torso, legs, hair, and face prints. I have just got them displayed with one with the alternate face. Both of these centaurs utilize the new centaur piece, which is how you connect the quiver to the legs. If you take that off you can see that there are two studs on the top of the body. And here's a better look at the figure and his face. If I take off his hair you can see that he has the exact same expression as the other one and also has a quiver back printing. Once you take the top off you can get a better look at how the torso attaches to the legs and it has got the same minifigure stud point. As great as I think the centaur minifigures are I really do wish they came with two different heads. That way you could have up to four centaurs with different facial expressions. Besides the minifigures, the biggest draw to this set is the brick-built Grob, and I think he looks very cute. He's got an articulated head, articulated arms, wrists, and legs. Unfortunately, there is this dark orange brick at the bottom, so if he is sat down, you can see that quite clearly. One thing I saw on Instagram is that they did not build up the back, and it kind of annoys me, but I will learn to live with it. I might buy a few extra pieces just to build it up and not make it so platy. 
I did see a mock of someone on Instagram who really built it up and even added a little tree to the back of it. Grop's face is printed and I love what they have done with the hair using a mixture of slanted bricks and one by one modified pieces. He's got a round tile on the front for his pot belly and he's got some sticker details to indicate his rags and his chest hair. I do wish there was some more movement in the elbow or such but I see it wouldn't quite go very well with the proportions. I do like the use of the brick built hands though as that way you can carry mini figures just like Umbridge like in the movie. The big fig hands also allow him to hold his bike handle with bell as seen earlier in the film. They just clip on there. He can't really ring the bell as he can't reach. He doesn't have much motion in that regard however he can move them to about here and about here. Personally, I'll be displaying him in the castle display as I don't have space for him in my minifigure frames. And I think there's enough for me to pose around with. One of my favorite details as well is the use of the rounded bricks as ears. And last but not least, we have the Forbidden Forest tree, which on its own stands pretty well. I don't have any of the other Forbidden Forest sets as I just bought Sirius Black on his own and I didn't really have much interest in getting the tiny Aragog as I have the 2010 Hagrid's Hut. But this tree stands pretty well. I love the mushrooms on the tree that were built using a green sausage piece, a white stud and the red mushroom top. On the inside the tree opens and you can see a lantern, a chicken bone and a white bone as well as a clip for the bike handle to clip on. On the top of the tree there is a spider dangling down via a white paddle just like in the set Aragog's Lair, which I really like. It's a nice touch. I love these new spider pieces, so I'm always welcome to have some more of them. The tree's base is also built up really nicely using some of these leaf pieces, and it has a lot of details and branches sticking out, which I really appreciate. And since I don't have any of the other Forbidden Forest sets, I think it's going to stand pretty well on its own. Now, this set has two instruction manuals, which I found quite odd considering they're both very small. I personally would have liked them if they were just one big one. The first manual covers bag one and you build the tree, Harry and the two centaurs. And manual two, you build brick built Grawp, Dolores Umbridge and Hermione Granger. On the back of the manuals it shows you the rest of the sets but it's missing the buildable Hedwig and the burrow. I believe in America the burrow is supposed to be an exclusive which I think is why it's not on there. But also interesting to note it says limited availability on the back. Now I've heard some rumours that this was used on last year's wave of sets so that they could discontinue them and not have uproar but the fact that it says limited availability for this year's sets I find kind of odd. So there you have it, set 75967, Forbidden Forest Umbridge's Encounter. At first I did want to get this set at Kmart or on sale somewhere a lot cheaper where it wouldn't be the full 50 Australian dollar price tag as I did think that much for this set was a bit ridiculous. I do understand that there were quite a few big elements in this set as I did not receive many spare pieces. In fact, these are the only spare pieces that came with the set. Luckily, one of them is that green sausage. I really do like this set and I'm glad that they are going back and redoing some of the older Order of the Phoenix sets. I do wish we got a bigger Order of the Phoenix set and not just the small sets in the 2020 wave were dedicated to them. I have heard rumours of an Order of the Phoenix advent calendar next year so I would like to see that as there could be Grimmauld Place. I would also love to see a Ministry Fight or a Department of Mystery set. I think that would be really good but for now this will do and I think it will look very cute on display. If you can though, I would get this set on sale. I will be building the Room of Requirement and Astronomy Tower sets as they were the only other two sets I was able to pick up at the Lego store. I will be building them tomorrow and reviewing them on this channel too and do bits and pieces like that. Until I can get my hands on the rest of those new sets, I will be going back and reviewing some of the older Harry Potter sets, including the 2007 Hogwarts Castle. If you would like to see those reviews and want to see more of the 2020 Harry Potter sets, please subscribe to the channel and until then I'll see you later.